So gone are the days of Dolly 3 as OpenAI has officially rolled out its brand new AI image generation model called 4.0. And in this video, I'm going to show you some real world examples of how you can start generating high quality images inside ChatGPT using this new model. So be sure to stick around for the entire video. And if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Ryan and my mission is to help you navigate the overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. And if you want to know my favorite AI tools and prompts that I use for marketing and content creation, be sure to get my free AI marketing essentials guide. You can find the link for this in the video description or pinned comment below. So if this is your first time hearing about OpenAI's new image update, I published a video yesterday covering all the important details that you need to know. So I'll leave this in the video description below if you want to check it out. I'll also leave this page on OpenAI's website for you to check out as well. Just a cool resource about all these examples with the different prompts. So I'll leave that in the description below too. Now, just quickly, I want to show you a quick comparison between Dolly 3 versus this new GPT-40 image generation. And so this is a simple example. Generate a realistic image of elephants in Thailand. And this is what Dolly 3 created. Now, is this image terrible? No, but I wanted a realistic image, and this is not realistic at all. And if I'm being honest, that's the biggest area where Dolly or Dolly 3 struggled, is the images that it generated were not realistic whatsoever. So take that exact same prompt plug it over to the new 4.0 image generation model, and this is the image that 4.0 produced. Much better than what we see from Dolly 3 in terms of realism. And I've been messing around with this new 4.0 image model a lot today. And one of the first examples that I did was editing an existing image. Now, I don't know the name of this guy, some popular fitness influencer, but he made this video that went viral about a morning routine. And so what I did is I, I clipped this image and I also uploaded a headshot of myself in the same chat. And then I gave it this prompt. And by the way, I'll leave all the prompts that I mentioned in the video description below so you guys can easily copy and paste those. Now, the gist of this prompt is basically I want to replace him in this image with me. And this is what GPT-40 came up with. Now, is this perfect? No, I definitely don't look like that. Number one, I wish I did. But number two, I noticed the bottle is not flipped upside down. So you'll see here the bottle is flipped upside down. And this one, the bottle is flipped the other way and the water's like coming out of the end. So it doesn't make sense there. But other than that, I mean, my face is pretty on point there. Obviously the body physique's not on point. But super impressed, Dolly 3 wouldn't have came close to an output like this. But that's a super quick example. If we look over to more a more real world example, let's look at infographics. Now, infographics are really useful tools that you can include on blog posts, on email newsletters, or any other content formats. And so I found this one just from a Google search, uploaded it, and I said, create an image of an infographic on six steps to launch your first online community. Now, obviously you can enter whatever you want there for your topic. And this is what it came up with. Now, the other thing too, is this isn't perfect, right? It went two, 11, six, four, five, five. So definitely out of order. I wanted just one through six, but other than that, I mean, it was pretty flawless. The image was the same six steps to launch your first online community. The text is spelled correctly, launch and grow, launch and grow, promote your community, right? Obviously there's some uh, things here that need tweaked and whatnot, but you can come in here and probably edit this on, on Canva, on Photoshop. I tried to revise it. So that's the same thing you could do with just like Dolly threes. If you click an image, you can click the select option and then edit your selection and then give it a prompt on what parts of that image that you want to update. Just a little quick tip there. But that's the first use case. And I know this isn't perfect, but again, Dolly 3 would not have come close to this output and it does just need a little fine tuning. But the first real world example would be infographics. Now, another real world use case for this new 4.0 image generation model is redesigning logos, whether that's company logos, logos for a personal brand, it doesn't really matter. In this example, I uploaded a logo of a real local business here that I do some marketing work for. It's called Tire Heroes. They're a mobile tire shop in Des Moines, Iowa. So I uploaded their actual logo and then I gave it an advanced logo prompt. And again, I'll leave this in the video description below if you want to try it out. But this is an important call out here. The more advanced and detailed and specific that we can get in our prompts, the better outputs that we're going to get. You can apply that to anything related to AI. And so in about two to three minutes, 
ChatGPT came back with this, a much more professional and higher quality logo in my opinion. Now there's a little things off here with the text and whatnot. Tire Heroes is spelled correctly. The actual logo of this guy looks more professional than the original image. Um, but the only flaw, and I, I forgot to mention this in the first example, is that sometimes these image outputs can take a while. We're talking two, three, four, five minutes just for one image. And I would imagine that OpenAI is still rolling this out to millions of accounts. A lot of people are hopping online at once. The servers are probably overloaded. I don't know what the exact issue is, but I expect OpenAI to fix that in the near future. But that is another quick real world use case is redesigning logos. Now, another useful example is podcast cover art. So if you have a podcast, this is a great use case to use that new 4.0 image generation model. You could use this with Dolly 3, but the quality is so much better. This is what I got when I generated new podcast art for a hypothetical show called AI Rabbit Holes. And then you would use this across Spotify, Apple, and all the relevant podcasting platforms. So all you need to do is upload a logo if you have a logo for your podcast and just use a prompt like this. This. Now, what's important about this prompt is you want to have exact image dimensions as across different image formats, whether it's blog posts, YouTube thumbnails, podcast cover art, logos, etc. Best practices require different image dimensions. So make sure you're including that in your prompt. But again, in a matter of a couple minutes, I use this new 4.0 image model to get podcast cover art that looks as high quality as this. Now, another real world use case is business cards. And this was a fun example where I took out one of my old business cards. I took a picture with my phone and I uploaded it to chat GPT. And then I prompted it with the following generate a premium sleek, double-sided business card design. Again, I gave it those exact image dimensions for best practices for an AI consultant named Ryan Dozer, gave it some other details here in a matter of about three to four minutes. This is what the new 4.0 image model generated. What's super impressive about this is it took my old, just from an uploaded image, it took my logo. It didn't screw up the logo. Dolly three would have definitely tarnished the logo. It also didn't misspell anything. My name spelled correctly. All the information down here is spelled correctly. Honestly, super impressed. It didn't mess up any logos or it didn't misspell anything. And again, it's not perfect. I could take this business card, come over to Canva, come over to Photoshop, edit the colors, edit the font, maybe throw some other images in there, icons, etc., and do whatever you want with it. But that is another useful business case here is we can use this 4.0 model to help us generate business cards. So now I'm going to run through a few more quick examples that are still useful with one of them being an email newsletter header. So if you run an email newsletter and you're trying to figure out a way to generate a graphic that you can include in every email, which by the way, that adds professionalism to it, you can now leverage this 4.0 image model to do this. Simply find this prompt in the description below. Now, is this perfect as my newsletter is called the AI power play? This isn't perfect, but it's better than nothing. And this is something that I could definitely use just removing the date, maybe making a few other tweaks here and there, but that's one simple use case, email newsletter headers. Another relevant use case are memes. Now you can upload an existing meme and just find and replace the text and try to do it that way, or you can create a meme from scratch. And that's what I'm doing in this example. So what I really like about this example, and the meme is not funny or it's not great or anything like that, but the fact that it looks professional, number one, number two, I don't think it misspelled anything. I'm reading all of these words here and nothing is misspelled. So the fact that it didn't misspell one word in a meme, and there's a lot of words in this meme, honestly is very impressive. For best results, if you're trying to use this for memes, I would probably recommend taking existing memes, uploading them, and then fine tuning it to however you want. But that's another great use case of 4.0 image generation model is creating memes. So this is all cool, but now I'm going to run through a very quick example of how you can actually start to generate images inside ChatGPT using this new 4.0 model. And by the way, according to Sam Altman and OpenAI, this is supposed to be available to even free users of ChatGPT. I know it's available to all paid users right now, but eventually this is rolling out to free users. And so in this example, I'm going to redesign a logo. And so in this example, I uploaded a logo of my alma mater, the University of Northern Iowa, and I basically said, 
said, I'm looking to redesign a logo for this university. Generate an advanced image prompt and nothing more. This is very important that I bring this part up as I'm not actually generating an image in this step. I'm looking for an advanced image prompt that I'm going to copy and paste into a new chat. You'll see exactly why I'm doing this. By the way, I'm also using GPT 4.5 for this example. So I'm gonna click enter and let's see what it comes up with. All right, so ChatGPT actually replied with three different prompts here, and ideally I would test all three of these, but because 4.0 is taking a while to generate images, I'm only gonna do one in this example. So I'm gonna copy and paste this prompt here for a modern and dynamic prompt. And then what you wanna do is open up a new window because we need to use GPT 4.0 to generate this new logo. So make sure you click that. The next part that's important is you wanna click View Tools, click Create Image. That's going to initiate the image generator. And then I'm going to copy and paste that new logo. And I also want to attach the existing logo. So I'm going to attach the existing logo, copy and paste that new logo. Then I'm going to click enter and I'm going to skip ahead once this new logo is complete. All right, so that took ChatGPT about two to three minutes to come up with that new logo and not bad. Obviously a little more modern design than what we're seeing from this logo right here. I also ran one of the other advanced prompts into a new chat while the other one was going just to see what I would get. And this is the other logo that it came up with. That's not too bad as well compared to the original logo here. But again, the point I'm just trying to share with you is I'm showing you a quick example of how you can generate images using this new 4.0 image model in inside chat GPT. And before I conclude this video, I just want to show you some other free AI image options if you weren't aware. I did talk about these on my last video about AI image generation, but the first one is Reeve or Rev. I am super impressed by this. This came out this week, only a few days ago at this point from what I understand. And just some of the image generation that this is creating, I mean, how realistic are some of these with the elephants? Some of these headshots look extremely realistic. Backgrounds of cities, farmers, backgrounds for thumbnails, etc. I'll leave a link to this in the video description below. You get a ton of usage even for free, so I'd highly recommend checking that out and just playing around with it. And the other one I've talked about a lot is Google's AI studio using Gemini 2.0 flash image generation. This is really good for editing existing images. I've shared this example before, but I uploaded a headshot and just said, revise what I'm wearing. I want to wear a black bow tie and tuxedo, but make sure the background and my body posture and face remain the same. Honestly, the 4.0 image model struggled with this and also Reeve can't, you can't edit images inside Reeve as well. And the other image generators just completely destroyed this. So this is a really cool example from Google's AI studio and where it excels right now is editing existing images. But those are a few other free AI image generators in addition to OpenAI's new 4.0 update that you should check out. And if you've made it this far into the video, I truly appreciate you. Now I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about OpenAI's new 4.0 image generation model? Do you like these use cases that I provided? Was I missing any? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you found value in this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Truly means the world to me that you guys are watching my videos. But most importantly, I hope you all have a great day.